Welcome to Mad Acre Farms. Ryan and I recently had the privilege to speak with a young gentleman about owning a farm or homesteading in Iowa. And I was nervous because what do we know about homesteading that we could enlighten this young man that would give him an aha moment? And I had to step back and really think about the definition of homesteading because I don't consider us homesteaders, right? Like I don't consider us that. So it weighed heavy on my heart a little bit because as a parent, this young gentleman is just a couple years older than our son. As a parent, what would I want my child to hear? Then I had to step back and I had to rethink about that statement. So stay tuned. Don't tell people your dreams. Show them. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to show you. This guy right here had a master plan. And I never thought that we would be here. But we're here and we're sharing our journey. And boy, do we have some lessons learned on life, farming, gardening, this YouTube journey. You name it, we got them. We have a little something for everyone. So stick around. Let us share our lessons learned. So that statement, what would I want my child to hear? It's not what I'd want them to hear. As a parent, I want them to know the challenges and the obstacles that may come into play. In homesteading, as I look up the definition, it actually is kind of what we're doing. Um, so that young man actually enlightened me and so I want to thank you for that because I don't necessarily know that you know that but that's what I want to talk about some of the questions that we were asked and some of the things as being new to owning a farm new to homesteading that I wish we would have asked and I think it is it was such a privilege to speak with this young man because he was so, he was so motivated that you could just see that this is something that he has set out that he wants to do, which I think is absolutely amazing. Not because he wants to homestead, but because he has a goal in play and he's done his research and he continually is doing more research. So. As a new homesteader, for us, here are some of our challenges that we have faced. And this honestly, I think, goes for any size homestead because really, truly, anybody can be a homesteader, um, you know, regardless of your space. It's more so about building self sufficiency. And, you know, if you're producing from your property and you're selling, um, ideally, I mean, you're still building an income, you're being self sufficient. So, Here's my thoughts. One of the questions we were asked was, what was one of our biggest struggles or challenges that we faced that we wish we would have known? You know, something, something we would have known before we actually embarked on this journey. And mind you, this young man is doing his research and, you know, playing all the scenarios out in his head, which is absolutely amazing. And honestly, we we could have learned from from this young man because I wish we would have done that uh, because we didn't have a plan and you know we had a dream we had a dream I should say Ryan had a dream right Ryan had a dream and you know I finally saw the vision but we didn't really have a good plan meaning you know we really didn't have you know, we had an idea of what we wanted for a property um, but we didn't really have a good plan in play for, um, you know, what kind of animals we wanted. Having the structures in place, because I will tell you this, when we bought this property, we had chickens before we had coops. And normally that wouldn't be a big deal, but um, with Ryan, he tends to go big or go home. <laughs> and we, um, we struggled a bit with that. You know, have a plan and make sure you have your structures in place before you get 
you know, all these animals that you desire to have on your property because you're always playing catch up if you don't. And that's where we're at right now with Mad Acre Farms is we're playing catch up. It's difficult. It truly is. It's difficult, especially when you're trying to kind of build self-sustainability through the form of a market garden um, and making sure that you also have reliable structures in place for your animals because right now we don't. Um, like our goats and our pigs, we want to have permanent structures in place and we still have to, to do that. And there's just two of us here and we work, you know, we have our corporate careers as well. So it gets to be challenging. So that was a recommendation. So I'm going to tell you guys that, you know, if you're thinking about, you know, looking at farms or, you know, having a bigger property for a homestead and getting animals or whatnot, have your structures in place before you get them. And you know, and I think I've heard that pretty frequently um, since we've owned this farm, but it was a little, it was a little too late at that point. So another thing that I failed to mention, so I'm hoping he's watching this, is that, you know, you have to be careful because like for us, um, you know, you're, you're, you're looking at YouTube videos, you're watching homesteaders, and sometimes it's glamorized, right? Sometimes you don't see the work that goes in behind it. Sometimes you don't see the failures. And I will tell you that, um, you know, for, for us, um, with our channel, we definitely try to share, you know, our struggles, our challenges. I mean, we have successes, we do, we absolutely do, but we have more failures than we do have successes at this point. And honestly, right now, that's how I know that this is our passion because we have more failures than we have successes and we couldn't be happier. But there's a lot of work that goes into it and um, it doesn't build itself. It doesn't. And much like anything, you, you have to really put in what you want to get out of it. So that was... That was some advice that I wish I would have provided this young man um, when we were speaking with him that um, I didn't. So hopefully he's watching and you get that tidbit of information because it's important. So make sure you plan, um, but you can't plan for everything. So the next question has a lot to do with where we live here in Iowa. And it was more so around, you know, what were winters like with our animals and growing throughout the winter season? And we were brutally honest. Um, shoot, it's a struggle for us when it's not winter because we're so new to this. And, you know, being very new to the farm life, um, taking care of farm animals, um, growing your own food, it's a challenge in itself. But in the winter, it was even more challenging because ideally we're trying to build something where we're a little bit more effective and efficient um, throughout the property because right now we're lacking in efficiency. I'll say it, we are. We're lacking in efficiency. Um, we spend quite a bit of money on energy um, and we're working on getting that corrected. It's, it's a little defeating, um, but that was one of the things that you know we, we called out. And we also mentioned with our uh, cold winters here in Iowa, the biggest challenge for us was really keeping the waters um, constantly moving where they're not freezing. And, you know, we had the, the solarized air bubbler and it works. It really does. It works good. But when it gets cold, you know, it could only do so much. So that's the challenge. We're still working on that. We're definitely still working on that. As far as growing throughout the entire year. We're still learning. Um, we're working on getting a, uh, a high tunnel um, and working on some additional growing methods to see if we can make this work this year. Um, but it's a learning curve, it's a challenge, and um, we have not been successful at it. Last year we threw away a lot of food throughout the summer. Um, we donated a lot as well. We didn't preserve much. And that's, that's a shame. That's an absolute shame, and but that's the truth. That is the absolute truth. So for us, I think the key this year at least is going to be learning how to preserve our food through the form of canning. And who knows, we've been looking into a freeze dryer. 
um, but those things are so stinking expensive. We want to make sure we're making the right financial decisions and maybe canning is the way to go this year, but we'll see. That's a to be continued, but we're definitely preserving our food this year to carry through the winter. So we're working on that. We are a work in progress here at Mad Acre Farms. We actually attended a seminar a few months ago and there was a fantastic motivational speaker there. His name is Matt Booth. Um, he's from Iowa. And there was something that he actually said that resonated with both Ryan and I. And it had something to do with having your five goals with you at all times, making sure you're writing them down or you know having them on your phone. But you always have your goals with you. And these goals could change. And you change your goals as you go, right? Because of growth. And we gave that same information to this young man because at the end of the day, Ryan and I always talk about our goals. We talk about our goals. Um, it's a daily thing. It really is. I mean, we set, we wake up in the morning and, you know, there's a goal in play. And, and that was the advice that we gave this young man is that you write down five goals. And exactly what Matt told us. You write down your five goals and you carry them with you. And at some point, you're going to get discouraged. At some point, you're going to question why you do what you do. And you pull out your goals and you look at them. And if they've changed, do you need to make adjustments? Maybe, do it then. But at the end of the day, the purpose of what you're doing is based upon those goals, reaching those goals. I'm gonna share with you, Mad Acre Farms, five goals. Goal number one, create a generational farm that we can pass on to generations to come that provides sustainability. Goal number two, this is a big one. This is, this is a Ryan goal. Someday, someday, he hopes he can Someday he hopes that he could add on to this acreage in the form of more acres to create his vision, to create something great. One day maybe, you never know. Goal number three, establish a respectful reputation carry a strong responsibility to feed our community. And that gets carried on from generations to come. Goal number four, create something great with this market garden and show people it can be done by people like us who have little to no experience, but just have a dream. Goal number five, create a destination for families that want to come to the farm, learn about agriculture, learn about growing your own food, have a meal straight from the garden, and so much more. We're going to create this destination. All right, folks, those are our goals. What's yours? But when we first moved here, um, we came with nothing and like literally nothing. We had nothing but the clothes that we brought. Dear Iowa, you are kind. As a kid, I, I didn't know what it was, you know. I was like second, third grade. Uh, but they um, ran a story about us, our life, and what happened to us because we were victims of gun violence. You are beautiful. People from everywhere throughout Iowa start coming, like bringing us stuff and helping us in mm -hmm. whole nine yards. You are welcoming. When, when you have something like that traumatic happen to you in one place and then you get an overwhelming response, you yeah. know? It's just, it's home. You are exactly where we need to be. You are home. <laughs>